What we've got here is the schematic of the TA386 uh, probe. And as you can see, it is much more complicated than just a straightforward uh, connection from the tip here through to the BNC connector over here. There's all this circuitry in here, and there's a very good reason for that. The, this is um, a high performance transmission line. And uh, this coax cable is very special uh, cable. It's got certain characteristics. And so um, you have to imagine uh, that you've got to get uh, signals that go from DC all the way through up to the specification of the probe, which in this case is 200 megahertz, uh, through this cable with a minimum of deviation in that process. And if we then uh, look at the probe and then look at what's actually, this is a highly simplified version of what's inside the, um, uh, the picoscope. And you'll see here there's a BNC connector and there's our measurement circuitry inside. And there's a one meg resistor across uh, this BNC uh, connector at the, from the input of the scope. And there's also associated capacitance. But you also got to remember there's inductance in all of this, but primarily the capacitance is the key uh, feature. So what you're attempting to do is balance this, uh, the capacitance in this probe to the capacitance uh, of the actual picoscope itself. And this is why we have this uh, adjustment facility to balance the probe. And, um, and as I said, this is a fairly um, involved, um, or the, the, the process is going to be straightforward, but um, it just goes to show you how complicated these probes are. And also I'll talk later about this, about why probes can be phenomenally expensive um, because they're trying to give you uh, a quality and linearity of, a, of what's happening at the tip to what the actual scope actually sees. And so as, as an, we're going to delve into this, you know, to, to a degree, it's about generally understanding that these are much more complicated than just a single wire that goes from the tip to the uh, to your uh, scope and that's it, great. Um, it'd be good if it was like that, but it isn't. So you'll see here that the selection switch, uh, this is the um, schematic of the probe that we're actually using. This is the uh, latest version of the, um, the TA386. And you'll see here that there's a switch. Uh, this is your times one times 10 switch. And when your switch is in the times one position, you ignore all of the circuitry. So your tip comes through here, through the coax cable, through into the uh, box area and into your uh, scope. Whereas when you actually switch the switch to times 10, you bring in all of this other circuitry. And it's really important that when you do the probe compensation, it's actually done uh, with the switch in times 10 mode because you're taking into account this capacitance that's actually in here. So uh, it's uh, much, much better. So it's really important to remember that always keep your probe in times 10 mode when you're doing frequency compensation, which is what we're about to, uh, to do. So uh, let's have a look and see what the uh, calibration process is. So uh, we need to uh, perform a, a couple of calibration exercises. And the first one is we're going to zero the channel offset. And so let me just go uh, to my camera over here. So here's our uh, picoscope. But inside here, there are all sorts of uh, buffer circuits, um, amplifiers, etc. And they will naturally have offsets in them. And what they're trying to do is actually get rid of all those offsets in, from an electrical perspective. And so there are two procedures. One is actually getting rid of the offsets in this, which uh, should be done on a so like um, a daily basis, because it may vary um, with uh, temperature, um, just over time in general and all that kind of stuff. So we're going to zero the uh, channels first before we actually perform the calibration of the actual probe to the picoscope, okay? So let me just go back over here. And so we're gonna go, I'm gonna go through this in detail. Now, I'm not trying to teach you in this particular video how to use the picoscope. Um, this is the, uh, because I'm going to do separate videos for, for, the, for those elements. But what I'm going to do is show this uh, from the start, uh, from uh, powering up the software or, or uh, um, uh, starting up the software and going through this process. OK, so I'm going to now uh, leave the presentation uh, for the minute and I'm going to uh, open up the Picotech software. So here we have um, our uh, picoscope uh, screen and I need to, uh, if I go to channel A, uh, I'm just going to double click, oops, uh, just click on that. And 
uh, you'll see here that I can actually, uh, there's a zero channel offset, which is the most important, but this is what we're trying to look at here. Now, before I do anything with this, let's go back to uh, our setup on the bench and see what we have to do. So the first thing is I'm going to connect my scope probe to channel A. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect the ground lead to the clip like that. And I'm going to, in this case, make sure my probe is set to times one. So I've switched the switch to times one. And what I'm now going to do is null the electronic circuits inside the picoscope. So let's go back to uh, our picoscope. And so I'm not setting up anything else in this at all. All I'm interested in is zeroing the channel. So I'm going to, so I've opened up my channel A and I'm going to zero that channel. And you'll see it says short circuit the input to A, which is exactly what I've done. Um, and then we go continue. And you'll hear a few clicking noises in the background as it's performing this task. Okay, and that's all done. Now you would do that on all your channels that you're using. And it's good to do this whenever you power up your Picoscope um, because uh, things do drift in time. Um, and that's something it may a long time, it's not a short period of time, but also temperature might make a bit of a difference as well. So we've uh, zeroed the channel. So let's go back to our presentation and uh, let's just see. So we clip the probe uh, tip to the ground lead clip and we run the zero channel set for the given channel being used. So we've just performed that task. Now, the next thing we're going to do in our calibration process is we're going to do the frequency compensation for times 10 only. And so we're going to go through this, but we're going to create a waveform, uh, one kilohertz square wave, um, uh, which is uh, uh, two volts peak to peak. And that's how we're going to adjust our probe. So let's have a look at how we do that. So I'm going to go back to my Picoscope uh, uh, software here and Let's first of all, this is what we're dealing with channel A. Uh, I've colored A as red, uh, which is a bit like our marker sleeves that we use. So this is the, uh, the A channel. And let's go back to our uh, scope. And the first thing I'm going to do is connect a signal generator lead to my AWG output here. And there's my signal output leads. Now I'm going to take the short circuit off of my probe, which is what we used for zeroing. And I'm going to connect the zero lead to, or the earth lead to the zero of my um, signal generator. And I'm then going to connect the output of the signal generator to my probe. Like so I'm going to make sure these two wires don't touch. And I'm going to also make sure that my probe is on times 10. So I've just switched the switch to times 10 on here, right? And there's our adjustment. This remember, this is the latest version of the probe. So there's the adjustment, uh, compensation adjustment hole. And here I have my tool for doing that, of which I'm going to use the cross point end to adjust it. But first I have to set up my scope. So let's have a look and see what happens there. So let's go back uh, to this screen. As I said, um, this is not a tutorial on how to use uh, the scope uh, and all the features. This is just me trying to show you the process. So hopefully you would have seen a video before this, uh, or you may look at this and look at one after, that will actually show you about all the features that we're actually looking at at the moment. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm working on channel A. So I'm just going to touch on channel A and my probe is on times 10. So I'm going to go, it's not on times one, go to standard times 10. So I know that I'm actually on my times 10 probe. I'm now going to go to the vertical. And remember my signal is going to be uh, plus or minus one volt. Um, and so I'm going to change the range to uh, plus or minus two. Uh, don't worry about what you see on the screen at the moment. Um, and also I'm going to change my trigger threshold uh, here uh, to um, zero volts because my signal is crossing uh, from minus one to plus one. So I'm changing my trigger. So the scope will trigger on that transition. You'll see now the little yellow dot here, which is telling me that the trigger is now at zero volts, which is great. And I go into great detail about triggering and all that kind of stuff in another video, but I just want to show you how I'm setting up uh, this for this particular um, presentation. So 
What's next? Uh, let's set up our signal generator. So I'm going to go to the generator tab over here. I'm going to change the type to a square wave. I'm going to have one kilohertz, which is its default. And I'm going to put in one volt. Now this is one volt peak. And so this gives us one, uh, two volts peak to peak. Okay. And that hopefully uh, should be okay. And I'm now going to switch the generator on. And there we go. There's our signal. Now you'll notice that there's a huge slope on this square wave. This is meant to be a square wave. And this is what the probe compensation is adjusting for, is to get this, the probe and the picoscope matched together so we get a really sharp waveform here. Now, if I'm going to look at this in detail, I'm going to change my time base, slit, uh, time base slightly to improve the quality of what I see here. So I'm actually going to open this out so I can actually just get one cycle of uh, my waveform here, because I'm really interested in how to sharpen this up so we get a nice square wave. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you what I'm doing, and then we're going to look at this screen. So let me just, uh, now that I've set this up in the right format, I'm now going to go back here, and I'm going to take my compensation tool, and I'm going to show you what I'm doing. So what I'm going to do is adjust this. I'm going to put my uh, screwdriver in there, and I'm going to be turning this screw in here, or which is the adjustment capacitor in here. Right, so I'm actually adjusting this and you'll notice, let me just go on to here. So you'll see here at the moment, we've got this really uh, curved um, structure to our waveform. And as I turn the capacitor, you will see I can now straighten this up. And if I go too far, it actually goes the other way. So we actually now end up with this going um, up, so it was like um, uh, rather than uh, down, which is like this. So we can adjust this until we get what we consider to be a really good square waveform. Now, this adjustment doesn't affect the bandwidth of your oscilloscope probe. So in a in the later part of the experiment, we will be looking at the bandwidth of the probe. Um, and you may find it's not exactly as specified, but it's because of the setting of this capacitor. So what you want to try and do is get this as accurate as possible to be an absolute square wave, okay? And that's a bit, you know, that's, you know, uh, up to you to decide what you think is the, the best form of, of uh, square wave, okay? So that looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to leave it like that. And that uh, is the um, adjustment uh, complete for this probe um, for this channel, okay? Now, if you're using two channels, then you do the same thing again on your uh, other channel. And so you should do this for uh, all probes um, and uh, all channels uh, when you're setting up your oscilloscope. Now, this has now been set. There may be subtle variations between the channels. So uh, really it's arguable that you actually maybe do this um, uh, because you might not uh, use the same uh, probe on the same channel. So there's an argument to say that you actually do this every time. However, in general, it depends what you're trying to do. If you're trying to do um, very precise measurement uh, of electronics, then yes, it's worth doing that. But if it's just general, then maybe you just do this every now and again um, uh, to actually uh, tune this because you may find that um, it, 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 it's not necessary to get that absolute fine adjustment, okay? And uh, I'm now going to switch the signal generator off because we're not going to use it anymore. So I'm going to switch that uh, off and that's now disappeared. And let's go back to our presentation, okay? And so that's our whole calibration process done. Now let's move on to the next slide. And now we're going to investigate the limitations of probes through practical experimentation.